Hello everyone, we're here today to talk about the 555 timer chip. Yes, I know I promised this video about a month ago. Just life got in the way and I'm just now getting around to it. Okay? I'm also getting out my cheat notes right now because I made some cheat notes. I want you guys to watch this over here. Let me kill this light real quick. You see, yeah, it just blinked. Now watch it. It's a nice steady blue. And blink. That's called a reverse strobe. I'm going to explain how to do that in a little bit. I'm calling it a reverse strobe. I don't know what anyone else calls that. I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, okay? It's one of the things the 555 can do that the 4060 can't. So let's start talking about the 555. What are its merits? What is the bad parts about it? You know, what's it good for? Stuff like that, all right? Now, I want to make a disclaimer right now. I am not an expert in electronics. I'm a beginner, okay? I studied the 4060 chip enough to know what I can do with it for lighting a model. I'm sure there's many other things you can do with that thing. I know you can get it to produce music, tones, stuff like that. I don't have any interest in that, so I don't know how to do that. I just know you can. Same thing with this one. There's a lot to be done with the 5.5 timer chip. In fact, I remember being in high school getting a model book and there was a schematic for making a blinking circuit with a 5.5 timer. I got a friend of mine in high school to make it and I paid him for it. I still have that circuit around here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I know it's in this house. I saw it about a month ago. Okay? I still have that book too. But anyhow, getting into this. That disclaimer is just telling you, I know what this will do in terms of model building. Beyond that, I don't know. Okay? And I know it has a lot of other uses and stuff like that. So let me get the light back on here. Now, let's start talking about what it can do and some of its problems. It can make things blink. I can change one resistor out here and this thing will start blinking. Okay? Instead of what it's doing now. Trying to remember where I put that resistor. Hmm, that's it right there. So let me do that while we're talking. It can make things blink. The 555 timer chip is really, really good at making things blink. Okay? Putting that resistor in there is going to make her start blinking. See? Okay? And again, it's really, really good at making things blink. You can adjust the blink rate by using one of the resistors on the board. I'm going to go over that. I'm going to actually build this circuit for you guys live on camera like I did for the 4060. Um, it can make things anti-strobe like I showed you a minute ago. And it can make things strobe. And that's what I think most of you are interested in. Because the 4060 can't strobe. This can. Now, one of the great things about the 4060 is it will regulate voltage. This one does not regulate voltage. This resistor right here, let me zoom down on this a little bit, change perspective, okay? This blue resistor right here is a resistor for the LED, so I don't burn the LED out. I've got this chip running on 9 volts, and that resistor lowers the voltage across this LED, so it is not 9 volts, okay? So you have to resistor your LEDs with the 555. You do not with the 4060. That's one of the reasons why I like the, prefer the 4060. Next thing, this thing eats power. I would never, ever, ever try to run this circuit on batteries. Never. It's just going to suck a battery dry. I know one or two people have tried it and they end up replacing the batteries after 10, 15 minutes worth of use. It just eats power. But here's a bonus. It's durable. In other words, it can tolerate heat better than the 4060. It's not as fragile as the 4060. It'll work better with uh, electrical discharges than the 4060. Okay? The blank blink rate on this thing is done with capacitor and a resistor, just like the 4060. It's done with this capacitor and this resistor here. I'll get into that more in a little bit. Okay? Um, you can also use crystals to set the blink rate on this one, like radio frequency crystals. I don't have any of them, and I don't know how to do it. I just remember reading that last night when I was doing my research before I made this video. Okay. Um, I already talked about that. Can this make two or three different blink rates on it one chip? No. It cannot. It's just a timing chip. 
The 4060 is a multiplier chip with a timing feature. That's why it can do it. It can take one pulse signal and multiply it into 20 or 30 other pulse singles, signals. And that's why you get all those different blink rates on the 4060 because it multiplies the one blink rate into different channels, different outputs, different pinouts. Okay? Another problem I have with this one is signal leak. Signal leak. This is not a clean um, chip. It's not good for certain applications. If I were to hook this 4060 over here, the 4060 is on this end, into the same circuit as this, this will not behave right. Because this is leaking this on and off into the power stream. So now, what's going to happen is the 4060 is going to see intermittent power. And it's just going to behave in random fashion because of the intermittent power from this. That might be a good thing for like computer blinking lights, but it's a bad thing if you're doing navigation lights. So there's a way of shielding that. When I get to building the circuit, I'll show you how to shield that. It's called a smoothing capacitor. You connect pins 1 and 8 with a capacitor of a certain size, and the signal leak will subside, and you won't get much leak out of the circuit. Okay? And then these two will live harmoniously together. So that's another thing you have to worry about. Um, input voltage. Input voltage is 5 to 15 volts. Anything from 5 to 15 in this thing will work. I'm on 9 volts right now because I originally designed the circuit for 9 volts and I know that resistor is for 9 volts on this guy right here. Okay? And I can change the voltage at will, but the problem is output voltage corresponds with the input voltage. So if I were to reach over my power supply and change it to 5 volts, this thing won't even light up because that resistor will be sucking too much of the voltage out of the system. If I change it to 15 volts, I'm going to fry that LED. 4060, I can change the voltage on it all day long, and the output is constant for LEDs. Okay? It's optimized for LEDs. So, that's a bad thing about the 555 timer. Okay? We don't like the fact that it does this. That, you know, input and output are the same. You have to use resistors on your output. But the good thing is this. I can put 15 LEDs on that, and they're all going to blink in unison. 4060? Uh-uh. You're limited about three before it starts dimming out to the point where you can't see it. You put three or four on there, and they're going to start dimming. Okay? Because it's not allowed to pass so much current. Okay? The output on this is 200 milliamps, that means 10 LEDs. The output on this is 10 milliamps, that means one LED. Yeah, I know, we've seen it working with more than one, so I'm not sure what's up with that. But I do know I can put far more LEDs on this guy, and he's going to work just fine. This one, I can't do that. So there we go, we just did a little rundown on compare and contrast between the two chips. What I'm going to do now is start laying out the circuit. And I don't know if I have time to do that before hands 3 and 4 returns tonight. And I have to do it. I, I can't be interrupted when I do that. So that might wait till later this evening for me to do this. Okay? So, yeah, we're going to wait. We're going to have a break right here. Now, one other thing. This thing's liable to be two or three parts because i got a lot to go over. Okay, when I build the circuit, I've got to explain there's three resistors in this circuit and there's a capacitor, and I've got to explain what they're doing. And this takes a specific type of capacitor. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but this is not the same kind of capacitor as I use on the 4060. This is an electrolytical capacitor, and it has a polarity like an LED, a positive and negative end. You reverse it, you're going to fry the capacitor. It's not like an LED in that regard. You cannot reverse that easily. I don't think you can anyhow. I think it really matters what you use there. So anyhow, let me stop here. I'm going to have to reset the circuit, clean everything off there, and rebuild it. Okay? And then start showing you guys how to adjust the blink rate and adjust the strobe rate and all that. And i got to do my research on the strobe circuit because I haven't done that yet. So that will delay this video from getting out there in the wild. Anyhow, I'm rambling. I will be back in a little bit and show you how to put this together.